In the previous lecture, we uh, mentioned that uh, h plus c square over 2 is a constant for an axial machine and that this may be thought of as the energy equation uh, for an observer moving with the rotor. Uh, it is important to note that there is no work interaction in this case, in this frame of reference. And the other uh, important point has to do with uh, the manner in which uh, H1, uh, the specific enthalpy, has to be evaluated. It must be borne in mind that H1 is the static enthalpy and hence it is frame independent. So uh, it may be evaluated in the moving frame of reference in the same manner as it is evaluated in a stationary frame of reference. So that is a very important point to keep in mind. The, uh, the two uh, or the most important fact that comes out of this is for, this, for an axial machine that H plus C square over two is a constant. And this has very important consequences in the actual design and uh, working of, uh, of an axial machine, as we will see uh, in a short while. Now, the SFE applied to the uh, rotor uh, led to an expression that uh, looked like this. So if you look at the uh, terms inside the square bracket, uh, it can be seen that there are basically uh, two uh, effects uh, that cause uh, work transfer to the rotor, whether it is uh, power uh, produced by the rotor or power being supplied to the rotor. There is a change in enthalpy and there is a change in specific kinetic energy. So change in specific enthalpy and change in specific kinetic energy of the fluid. So these two effects cause the work transfer to the rotor. Now, this naturally leads uh, to the definition of a very important performance parameter of a turbo machine, namely the degree of reaction. Uh, simply put, the degree of reaction uh, is uh, uh, a quantity that uh, uh, signifies how much uh, the enthalpy change contributes to the term in the square bracket. Notice that the term in the square bracket is nothing but H01 minus H02. So the degree of reaction basically quantifies how much uh, the change in uh, specific enthalpy contributes to the change in stagnation enthalpy. So you can see the definition of uh, the degree of reaction R here, H1 minus H2 divided by H01 minus H02. So, uh, it is clear from SFE applied uh, to the rotor that a uh, given amount of work transfer can be accomplished either through a change in specific enthalpy or a change in specific kinetic energy or both. Now, for an axial machine, since H plus C square over 2 is a constant in addition, <coughs> any change in specific enthalpy necessarily leads to a change in uh, relative velocity also. So if we combine this with the earlier statement, then we can say that a given amount of work transfer can be accomplished through a change in relative velocity or absolute velocity or both. That is the uh, insight that we gain from uh, the application of SFE to the rotor and the definition of the uh, degree of reaction. Okay. Notice that uh, degree of reaction can vary between zero and one. For instance, if the degree of reaction is zero, uh, then uh, there is no change in, uh, in specific enthalpy across the rotor. And such machines are usually called as zero reaction or impulse machine. Okay? Now, if the working fluid is compressible, then R equal to zero simply implies that the static enthalpy or specific enthalpy remains constant across the rotor. Now, in the case of an incompressible working fluid, such as water, uh, it follows from the definition of specific enthalpy that uh, a change in specific enthalpy uh, is equivalent to a change in pressure. Okay? So if uh, the change in specific enthalpy is zero across the rotor, then it implies for an incompressible fluid that uh, the pressure remains constant across the rotor. The Pelton wheel that we saw earlier is an example of such an impulse rotor where the pressure remains constant. Okay, let us uh, take a look at the figure uh, for an impulse machine. So here, uh, the water that uh, comes from the reservoir at, an, uh, at a higher elevation is actually um, uh, accelerated to a high velocity in the nozzle uh, 
and when it comes out of the nozzle the water uh, comes out at atmospheric pressure and the air inside the casing is also at atmos atmospheric pressure so the entire turbine operates at constant pressure and hence it's an impulse machine it must be uh, uh, understood clearly that a zero reaction machine and an impulse machine are not the same uh, uh, a zero reaction machine uh, implies that enthalpy is constant whereas an impulse machine generally signifies that pressure remains constant across the rotor but uh, uh, it is customary to actually use these two uh, terms interchangeably although uh, the context must be kept very clear when uh, these uh, terms are used let us now revisit the uh, equation relating uh, pressure change across the rotor and uh, the change uh, in uh, the uh, flow uh, flow properties along a streamline so this is uh, captured in this expression which states that any change in the pressure along a streamline is due to change in uh, u square over 2 and change in uh, c square over 2 so uh, this term uh, captures a centrifugal effect and this term captures uh, deceleration or acceleration of the fluid in the blade passage okay now let us look at this uh, expression for the two machines that we have seen so far namely the radial machine it may be recalled that we looked at both the radial and axial machines uh, in the uh, introductory part of the uh, of this series uh, if we take uh, this equation and apply it to a, a radial machine, uh, by design, um, uh, the change in relative velocity in the radial machine is usually very small. So we may actually set this term to zero. So it then becomes clear that the pressure uh, change in the impeller of a radial machine is uh, due to centrifugal action only. So if the pressure increases along the streamline, that is dp is positive, then it is clear from here that dr must also be positive, which means that the flow is radially outward in case the pressure increases along the streamline. So this explains why the flow is radially outward in a centrifugal pump and in a centrifugal compressor that we saw earlier. And it may be recalled that this was one of the questions that we had posed earlier, namely, why must the flow be radially outward in a centrifugal compressor or pump? And this answers that question. Uh, by the same token, if uh, dp uh, is negative along a streamline, that is pressure decreases along a streamline, then dr must also be negative. So in the case of a centrifugal turbine, then the flow is radially inward, as we saw in the case of the centrifugal turbine in an automotive turbocharger. Okay. So this equation explains quite clearly why the flow direction is the way it is in radial machines where the pressure change is due entirely to centrifugal action okay the work that is supplied to a pump pushes the fluid element uh, radially outward thereby increasing its uh, pressure so that's a very uh, simple interpretation that is possible from uh, this equation now if we apply the same equation to an axial machine to the rotor of an axial machine uh, then uh, we can actually set this term to zero in this case because the radius uh, of the streamline uh, changes very little across the rotor of an axial machine. It may change from uh, one rotor to the next, or uh, one set of rotor blades to the next set of rotor blades, but within a rotor blade itself, the change in radius is usually very small. So this term may be set to zero. So then it becomes clear that the pressure change in the rotor of an axial machine is uh, due entirely to a change in the relative velocity. So if uh, dp is positive, meaning pressure increases along the streamline, for example, uh, in an axial compressor, then the relative velocity must decrease. That is uh, c, dc is negative, and so c decreases. So in this case, the blade passage actually acts like a diffuser and decelerates the fluid and the deceleration of the fluid results in an increase in pressure of the fluid in the case of an axial compressor in the case of an axial turbine uh, where the pressure decreases along the streamline uh, uh, from this expression we can see that the velocity relative velocity must increase dc is positive so the relative velocity must increase so in this case the blade passage acts like a nozzle so we can actually then gain further insights from uh, 
the blade profiles that we had uh, looked at earlier. So for instance, this is the uh, rotor of an axial turbine and it is clear that the passage area uh, between the blades decreases and hence this acts like a nozzle and the relative velocity increases from inlet to exit in the case of a uh, axial turbine. In the case of an axial compressor whose rotor is shown here, the relative velocity uh, decreases from inlet to exit and the passage area increases from inlet to exit. So the flow is actually diffused in this case and the diffusion results in an increase in pressure in the, in the case of an axial compressor. Now, the blade shapes of for an axial turbine and the axial compressor are also uh, quite strikingly different. Now, in the case of a turbine, because the pressure gradient is favorable along the, uh, uh, along the direction of flow, uh, it is possible to have large pressure drops across the uh, across the blade passage and a large amount of work transfer is also possible which is why the blades are so highly uh, curved and they are also thicker to withstand the large amount of work transfer in the case of a compressor because the pressure uh, rise is, accomp uh, is accomplished by a diffusion of the flow, there is always a danger of the boundary layer uh, on the wall of the uh, blade or on the blade surface separating. Okay. So if the boundary layer separates, then the compressor undergoes what is known as a stall. And in a, a compressor design such as this, where the pressure rise is accomplished through diffusion of the flow, there is always the danger of flow separation. So the pressure rise across such a compressor, the compressor stage cannot be very high. Uh, it is typically 1.15 to 1.2, no more than that. If the pressure rise is more than that, there is a possibility of boundary layer separation. So, since the pressure rise uh, cannot be uh, very high in, uh, across the uh, blade passage in the rotor, the amount of work transfer that can be uh, accomplished is also less in this case. So, consequently, the blades of an axial compressor are uh, slender and the curvature is also not very high. Uh, in a sense, uh, we can uh, summarize and say that the uh, uh, blade passage of an axial turbine resembles a nozzle. So the rotor of an axial turbine is actually a set of rotating nozzles. And uh, similarly, the blade passage uh, in an axial compressor uh, uh, acts like a diffuser. And so the rotor of an axial compressor is actually a set of rotating uh, diffusers. So this uh, sort of interpretation is possible uh, from uh, the equations that we uh, just described. And the comments that we made about uh, work transfer being very high in the case of a turbine and work transfer uh, being uh, relatively small in the case of a compressor is also evident from the picture of the axial machine that we saw earlier. So if you look at this uh, uh, gas turbine uh, engine, the turbofan engine, uh, it can be seen that a single uh, ring of turbine blades here, the high pressure turbine, drives about five or six of the high pressure compressor blades, uh, which clearly demonstrates that the work produced by a single row of turbine blades here is sufficient to run the work, uh, I mean, is sufficient to run five or uh, six uh, rows of uh, compressor blades, or it is equal to the work uh, requirement of five or six rows of compressor blades. Similarly, the um, uh, uh, two rows or even one row of the intermediate uh, pressure turbine here is sufficient to run about seven or eight stages of the intermediate pressure compressor. So the work requirement of seven or eight stages of the intermediate pressure compressor can be met by just one or two uh, rows of uh, intermediate pressure turbine blades. So it is clear this is possible because the work transfer per uh, turbine uh, blade passage can be very high because of the favorable pressure gradient across these uh, blade passages when compared to the adverse pressure gradient across the blade passages of the axial flow compressor. Although uh, the process of diffusion that is utilized in, um, uh, in an axial flow compressor uh, is through diffusion and it is uh, not um, uh, really good from a fluid mechanic perspective going to the dangers of uh, flow separation. Uh, it is uh, still a uh, much preferred design and widely used. Uh, 
when compared to centrifugal uh, machines. So the pressure rise in the axial machine is due to diffusion of the flow, which, as we said, uh, is always accompanied by a danger of uh, flow separation. Whereas the pressure rise in the case of a centrifugal uh, compressor is accomplished through centrifugal action, and because the relative velocity remains constant across the impeller, there is no danger of flow separation here. Nevertheless, the axial flow compressor is used quite extensively in many installations because there are other advantages to this uh, design which offset the disadvantage uh, that we have just mentioned.